In this tutorial we're going to be creating a customized book cover, going for a minimal style. It can also be used to design other pieces such as posters, fan art, album covers, etc. If we don't already have a book whose cover we want to design, the first thing we'll do will be to choose the theme of the book or books we want to create. It can vary from romance, horror, sci-fi or any other theme we find interesting. For this tutorial we're going to create a fantasy collection of novels, so the style of our cover, although minimal, is going to have some elements that will evoke that theme depending on its book. With our theme already chosen we're going to do a brainstorming to gather some concepts for the creation of a cover. If we already have a synopsis or similar to work with, we can take the main ideas of the book and use them instead of the book title. The kind of brainstorming we're going to do here is a very simple one. We're going to grab the main words of our titles and write down words that will relate to them. They can be concepts, ideas, objects or actions, as long as they're somehow linked to our words. Don't be afraid to write things that don't make much sense. Those words can take us to other concepts that might be interesting. And once we're finished, we're going to choose just one or two concepts for each word that will piece together the final design of our covers. On our first title we took the main two words, devil and time, and chose a few words for each of them that we will translate as design elements in our sketch phase. If we're doing multiple covers we're going to repeat that process for all of them. That's going to help us create a mental image of each of the covers which is also going to help with the mood board. With a mood board, a visual help to inspire us, we don't need to stick just with book covers, we can search for any kind of minimalist style, as long as we know what we're looking for. We can also add color palettes, textures, typographies and different illustration styles to a mood board, but let's try to have a clear idea in mind before we start gathering inspirational material, as we don't want it to be all over the place and make us more confused instead of helping with our design. With our concepts and the help of our mood board, we're going to create the structure of our cover. The first thing to do will be to choose the elements that are going to appear. Book title, name of the writer and illustration. When it comes to the text hierarchy, depending on how well known the writer is, we're going to highlight their name instead of the name of the novel. But in general, the book title will be the one in bigger and or bolder letters. As we have two main elements, text and illustration, we must decide if we want the main protagonist to be one of those elements or if we want them to share protagonism. In our case, we're going to make the illustration the main element and relegate the title and author of the novel to a second place. That means that our illustration will be in charge to draw people's attention and we'll achieve that with the position, the size and the color palette. We're going to put our illustration on the top part of our cover filling around two-thirds of the space and we're going to put the title and the author underneath it. We can try different structures until we're happy, keeping in mind that if we're creating a collection we need to keep that structure in all of the covers. The next thing we're going to do is create the illustrations. For that we're going to go back to our brainstorming phase and take the concepts we extracted. For the first title we're going to use the words snake, red, darkness and hourglass and we're going to start our sketch. We're going to create a broken hourglass to signify the lack of time described in the title. Around it we're going to draw a snake, that's going to be the personification of the devil. In the color phase we'll integrate the red color as also a symbol of the devil. We're going to repeat the same process with the rest of our titles, take our concepts and extract the elements that will create the illustration. The color palette is a very important element when our design is going to be so simple as ours. It can make the cover and elements pop up. We can create a color palette for each cover or share the same for the whole collection. We can also base our palette on the theme of our novels. For example, if we are designing a horror collection, we can use dark colors and reds. If it's romance, we might want to go for a more pastel palette. If we are creating a sci-fi design, we'll maybe stick with blues and silvers. In our case, we're going to use the black as our base color, white, and then play with a different color for each cover. Our background is going to be black, but we can also add texture and the pattern to it. As our design is minimalist, the background is also a very important element of the design. 
To create our palette, we have a couple of tools that are going to help us with this process. Color set and intermediate color. If we don't really know where to start with our colors, color set might be a good beginning. We'll go to Window, Color Set and the Color Set tab will open. Then we'll click on the Add Color Set icon and on the next window we'll click Search for Color Sets and Assets. Clip Studio is going to open and we'll find an array of different color palettes already made, ready for us to use. We can download any color set we want. Go back to Clip Studio Paint, select the color set and click Add to Palette. In case we want to create our own palette from zero, we can click on the Edit Color Sets icon and click on Create New Set. That's going to give us a blank palette that we can customize from scratch. We can easily select the color with the eyedropper and click on the Add Color icon at the Color Set tab. For Intermediate Color, we'll open its tab or use a menu to open it, and we'll find four main colors and multiple options between them. This is going to be helpful if we already have some colors in mind, but we're trying to find some in-between colors to add to our palette, maybe to add highlights, shadows, or just find secondary colors for our design. Just as before, we can select with the eyedrop the color we want and click on one of the bigger squares at the corners. We can do that to the four of them. That will change the color to the ones we have selected and create a gradient between them. We can just select the color on one of the smaller squares and use it as a new addition to our palette. If we click on the menu on the left, we can change the number of colors in between the four main ones. The first thing to do will be to create a document with our desired size, depending on the size of a book or any other piece we are designing. Whatever our size is, we need to keep in mind that if we're going to print it, we need at least 300 dpi unless we're going to print it at home. In that case, 150 dpi is going to be more than enough. For the style of illustration that I'm going to be creating for the cover, some elements are going to have a line and just a few are going to be a shape. I'm going to choose a brush with some texture and I'm going to start to create the elements that are just line. You'll find the links to download the brushes in the description of the video. We can use special brushes to create repetitive elements like feathers, scales or arrows. That'll make the process faster and easier. To create a dotted line, I go to Stroke and change the gap between brush shapes from narrow to thick.
Once I'm done with them, I'm going to create the shapes of our other elements. I'm going to create the different elements in separated layers to make it easier later to add color as we're going to create all of them with the same color. In the Subtool Detail menu in Stroke, I'm setting a space between gaps higher than 200 and changing the brush size to 1.5 to make a thinner dotted line. To ink the illustration, I'm using the symmetrical ruler. There will be a link in the description to another video on symmetrical rulers. Once we have all the elements ready, we can move on to the color phase. The color is going to be a very easy part as we don't have to render our illustration. If I need to change the color of the line of the whole layer, I select my color, select the layer whose color I want to change and go to Edit, Convert to Drawing Color. If I want to change the color of just a part of the line, I go to Layer, Control click over it and select Transparent Pixels. That way I can go over it with a brush and change the color of the part I desire. As we have the main elements separated, we can play with the third color and try it on different elements until we find the perfect combination. For more ways to change the line color, you can check the video 3 ways to color line art. You'll find the link in the description. If we are already okay with the way our illustration looks, we don't need to add texture but in our case we're going to add a little bit to the whole design as part of our aesthetic. We'll copy our texture and paste it on our document, always put it in on top of all the layers. We can create our own texture by scanning a piece of texture paper, taking a picture of some cardboard or crumpling a paper. We can also look for free paper textures online. As the texture is mainly white and the background is black, 
We're going to embed the color and then play with the blending mode of our layer and the opacity, until we find the one that pleases us. Here I'm using the lighten mode. From now on we need to remember to create the layers underneath this one if we want the texture to affect them. Even if the text is not the main element in our design, it's still very important, even more so when our cover is so minimal. When it comes to the typography of our design, we can go two different ways. One would be a simple style that will look good regardless of the theme of our novels, and the other one would be inspired by our theme. For example, for our fantasy novels we could use a simple serif typography or one with flourishes. If we choose the second one, we might want to go for a subtle kind, which usually looks more elegant instead of going for one with crazy shapes and trills that will make our cover look cheap and will also make it harder to read. We're going for the first option as we want most of the attention on our illustration. Something else to keep in mind in our case is the black background. When it comes to light typography over the background, we need to make sure that the thickness of the typography is enough to be printed, because depending on the method we use to print, the black background can make the letter thinner and in some cases unreadable. So if we're planning on printing our cover, we'll make sure that the text is thick enough, not just to be seen on a screen, but also to be printed. That's why we'll keep away from the very thin typographies. Once we have the typography, we're going to create the hierarchy. The title is going to be the most important one with a bigger size and thicker, and the author underneath it is going to be smaller and thinner. Having our illustration, typography and texture, we are finished with the design. We'll make sure to save as Clip Studio Paint format so we can edit anything that needs to be modified in the future or in any case we change our mind. If we are not going to print our design, we can just export normally. Go into File, Export, Single Layer, JPG or any other format we choose. In case we're printing, we can choose a JPG, a TIFF or a PDF. If we're going to print professionally and we want to make sure that nothing is going to happen with our typography, I advise you to rasterize the typography layer prior to exporting the file, but always remember to save a Clip Studio format without rasterizing in case you need to modify the text. To export as TIFF, we're going to follow the same path as we did with the JPG, but if we're going to export as PDF, we need to do it in layer, export multiple layers, PDF. That option is very useful in case you have multiple pages to export as a single file, but it's only available in the X version of Clip Studio Paint. With our files exported, we can proceed to share it on our social media, print it at home or send it to a printer.